the books are just the lesson plans. At the end of each lesson plan, there is a link where teachers can download a full PDF that includes the primary sources, any kind of graphic organizers, student worksheets, instructions, all of that there. If we printed those out, each of those books would be about 300 pages. That's not feasible to carry around. So what we do with all of our primary sources is we drive students to the original source, we provide historical context when needed, because if you have primary sources and students don't understand who the people or what is the event or what is going on in this time frame, it doesn't have as much meaning. Whenever possible, we include original source formats because most of our students have never seen a Western Union telegram. And we provide supports to make it accessible. So for example, this is all in capital letters. For some students with certain reading disabilities, that's gonna be very challenging to read. So we have it here, we also have a transcription below. So we always are thinking about what are students gonna need? Are they gonna need more context for the source? Do they need vocabulary support? Trust me, we're doing one on the colonial and revolutionary era. There is a lot of vocabulary support built into that because there has to be to make it accessible. So we take these unique sources and we pair them with active learning strategies. In all of our lessons, students need to be doing. They need to be, I say, to think about any active verb. This is not a classroom where it's going to be the teacher giving instructions or giving, delivering material for 45 minutes. It's five minutes of setup, 20 minutes of activity. It's small group work, large group work, class discussion. It's putting the students in charge of their learning. So we also work very hard to make sure our work is accessible to as many people as possible. Lessons are designed to be used whenever possible with or without technology so they can be printed out or they're PDF billable for teachers who do have access and students can type directly into the worksheets of the graphic organizers. All our files that are downloaded are screen reader capable so that students with visual disabilities can have it read to them if needed. That can also be a support for English language learners. We work with a variety of resources. We try to include some visual, some textual, also audiovisual when it is appropriate. We work with the best people in the field, whether that's practitioners working with culturally responsive teaching practices, that's also bringing in the best historians and scholars to lend their expertise to the project. And we also design these not for any one community, but for a national and even international teaching audience. So that's our philosophy. When we were given the opportunity to work with the 400 Years Commission, we began to work on a project, and this is the cover of what the book will look like when it's finished this fall. And we're calling this our Moving Freedom Forward series. And the goal of the series is to teach towards a more inclusive view of history. Because I believe that all students need to see themselves in history at all time periods. That's what makes it relevant, interesting, and real. Now, in order to do that, we've assembled some, uh, some wonderful historians who are lending some of their voices to the articles, which are coming in as we speak. Uh, we wanted to get a quick overview of some of the experts we're working with. Uh, our lead historian is Dr. Gretchen Soren. She is most famous for her book, uh, Driving While Black, that turned into the documentary by the same name, and also the, the movie, The Green Book. Dr. Soren is a distinguished professor at SUNY Oneana, and she is our lead historian. She is writing one of the context articles for the lesson plans, but she is also working with the other historians so that we're bringing the latest scholarship into the hands of our teachers. Wow. Because many of them can't keep up, right? There's no way as a teacher you can keep up with reading all of the journals and all of the books, even that they want to. So we're trying to bring the best information to them. The beginning of a series of articles. So first is Resources for Studying African American History by Dr. Tara White from the University of North Carolina. We have an article on using material culture, how to use objects and artifacts to help understand African American history from Dr. Tiffany Bowman. Uh, Mr. Jason Butler from Facing History and Ourselves is writing an article specifically for teachers on how to work with topics that have graphic, offensive, violent topics to content to understand when and how to approach these topics 
with students of different age levels or maturity levels. Uh, we're also working with the team at the National Museum of African American History to talk about how to take current events and place them into historical context. Many times our students